Hi, this is Jen Finley with Cover It Magazine. We are at our bar in downtown Reno. It's really the hap. And see this tenancy, and they are awesome. You are awesome. I love your music, and to it, it's not your typical sound to me because it sounds like there's so many elements. There's even elements of reggae in it, and I wanted to know how do you accomplish that in um, within your band. Yeah, I, th I think the key word is is typical. You know, we did, we did not want to be typical. And so there's a uh, conscious effort. Um, there's a, a formula, so to speak. You know, we try to keep the, the beats per minute, you know, groove based. And when we come up with riffs, uh, try not to be too contrived, you know, with any kind of specific genre. It's, it's just if it, if it sounds cool to some professional musicians, then we just kind of go with it. And, and um, how old were you when you picked up your first instrument, and what instrument was that? Um, well, technically, uh, what would that be, you know, about maybe 11, 10, 11 years old, you know, first instrument, you know, your tonettes and recorders, you know, things like that that they introduce you to. Um, but the, um, the first instrument that I really gravitated toward and, and put any specific time was percussion, you know, with drums and uh, things like that and as a result of those things I learned how to read music uh, you know because of the uh, the keys and uh, uh, timpani and having to tune things and stuff like that and and eventually that led to the keyboards and um, you know and it kind of went from there. That's a really interesting transition from drums to keyboards I've heard that more than once. And then the the musical part you know the music theory um, was later kind of manifested when I started kind of writing lyrics and things like that. And so um, the syncopation part of drumming came into, you know, play later uh, with how you kind of attack from a lyrical standpoint and uh, being able to, of course, construct music from a compositional standpoint, you have to have a grasp, at least a basic grasp of chord structures and, you know, keys and different things like that. So it was almost a necessary evil. What other instruments do you play? Um, over the years, um, like I said, just you know, kind of went to the keyboards, and you know, I've experimented with trumpets and French horns and trombones and things like that. You know, brass instruments, um, but um, you know, pretty much stuck with you know the uh, the drumming and uh, percussion uh, keys. And I finally broke down and have really taken seriously, you know, actually breaking down and learning the guitar. You know, because when you're working with other musicians, just from writing music, um, I had to have that point of reference to be able to just kind of expedite things and move things along so they don't bog down. You seem really like the kind of person that just takes the bull by the horns and you plow forward no matter what and it's, it seems like even if a wall or speed bump were to come up that you just push past it. Is that true? Yeah, I would agree with that. I'm pretty pragmatic, you know, in most approaches. Okay, so being pragmatic, um, how how do you find this has given you success as a musician? And that's a really good question. I would say, you know, that uh, the, the pragmatic aspect along with the word perseverance, you know, is very, very critical um, because there's always going to be those proverbial bumps in the road and the roadblocks and the challenges that come up. And um, your beginning with the end in sight is so critical with why are you going to do it? Because there's always going to be something that makes you want to quit, whether it's, you know, haters and naysayers, or whether it's, you know, potentially a, a parent, you know, that says that we can't afford, you know, to do this or that. You know, there's no, uh, there's no rhyme or reason, you know, to, to say, but it's, it really does. It comes down to a personal conviction, whether you want to kind of be an astronaut or a teacher, you know, or a musician, you know, you make the decision, you know, and then get to work. You know, I've noticed in common with musicians over the time I've been interviewing that the, there's a similar thread, and that is that they start at a very young age, and that um, whether some people have been three playing the violin, you were 11 with the drums, I mean, you know, and other things. And um, do you think that there's a correlation between a personality type that just whether they chose being a musician or a doctor, they would have succeeded? Or is it something about the music specifically that just beats in your heart and makes you continue to persevere? 
Yeah, I think, you know, it's, an, again, another interesting question. Um, I think that, that when, of course, you're young, it's easier, you know, to kind of learn because you don't have these mental roadblocks, again, and when you're older, but it probably is a little bit easier. And I never, actually never really thought about that aspect, you know, of it, so I'm kind of thankful, you know, that, that you mentioned that, you know, of course, you know, not able to, of course, do things forever and ever, and so what are you going to be able to do to kind of establish something you could pass along, you know, so... Um, so it is, it is uh, something, I think there is something to that. You know, actually, I think if, if you start something when you're young, you know, musically, I think it does. It does stick with you, whether you play an instrument or whether you just go and, you, and you're a fan of music um, or whether you need music to calm your soul, whether you need music to kind of motivate you and get you excited about different things. It's, it's a, definitely a common thread. Yeah, I agree. Music's in the heart. It's just... And it beats, it resonates I, with everybody. I agree. When I listened to it, I, it made me feel um, empowered. But it just, and it felt good. And it was positive. So your song with Don't Get Angry, Don't Get Angry is um, such a positive, positive song. And it moved me. I had tears in my eyes, literally, of happiness listening to it. Can you say a few lyrics for people listening and people watching um, so they can get a feeling for it? So that song begins, you know, the world we live in is a weird hunt for treasure. To saying what success in life is so hard to measure. We hustle and we bustle till we make it our ruin, creating all this stress in life with goals we're pursuing. Your blood pressure's going up like a curtain. You're killing yourself with your thoughts, that much is certain. So don't get angry now and heed my plea. You've got to deal with what's in front of you and be happy. So don't get angry. You know, and it gets back into the you know, the part that we just talked about, so. And the difference is like night and day because it does truly come, you know, from the inside. Yeah, I, I can hear that listening to it. It's just, it feels good. It's feel-good music. It is, um, that's a great explanation. <laughs> it is feel-good music. Absolutely. And um, so you have an EP that's coming out, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have our debut album on iTunes that was released in 2012. Our Road to Rome EP is uh, hopefully going to be released by the end of this month. And as I mentioned, we, we have material, I mean, probably six months. You know, we have stuff that we'll be releasing probably about every six months. We prefer to doing kind of like two releases a year, smaller EPs, you know, than the big album, you know, once a year, you know, because it just keeps things fresh, you know. I like that you do it that way. So, and can you let people know when that's going to um, happen? Yes, uh, the target date is July 28th, and we're currently mixing and mastering right now. So, uh, Scott Curtis at Stonehaven Studios is working very, very hard to make sure that that happens. If not, you know, if it's an August date, you know, it's we're we're still playing shows, and you know, through the summer they'll be able to hear the songs, and it'll come out soon. Oh, I look forward to it. I can't wait. Uh, and, and then for social media, let's talk social media. For, for Twitter, for um, Facebook, I, I want everyone to know, what, what's your Twitter handle? Yeah, it's at Seedless Tendency, you know, so very simple. Um, the second word, Tendency, is actually broken down to the number 10, D-E-N-C. You know, so that's a little acronym that we have. Um, uh, same thing, Facebook.com forward slash Seedless Tendency. SeedlessTendency.com, you know, we have a website, so they'll, if they just Googled Seedless Tendency, they'll be able to find us. I feel like you met your goal, your musical yes. goal. You know, and, and I've, I've been asked that before, and the answer to that is um, yes, but there's more. Because, like, literally, when I started this, it was just to have fun, and oh my gosh, if we could ever play at Cantina, you know what I mean? And... And so uh, really what happened when we started writing our music, that changed everything because people for some reason liked it. And that just like, really? You know, you liked it? Like, okay, well, we'll just keep doing it then. And then, um, you know, just think good things kept happening. You know, we would be invited, we were invited to Cali Roots Festival in 2012, um, you know, writing songs and stuff like that. You know, you just, 
you see these little benchmarks of feedback, you know, from professionals. So then it just gives you that confidence, just like, well, you know, maybe I'm finding this kind of like second life. Cool. You know, so that's why we try to, you know, do things like, you know, the acoustic shows. And um, it's, it's to the point now where it's harder and harder to do free shows, you know, but we really like to, you know, because um, it's, again, a, a way of kind of like giving back because it seems like the way that things are moving, just like we used to be able to play with bands that now it's harder to be able to get together with them because they've succeeded, we've succeeded. You know, so now you've got agencies and management companies involved and stuff like that, and the stars are just more and more difficult to align. Um, but that's a good problem to have. You know? I think that you've achieved so much movement in the community with your music and beyond the community with your music. It's, it's really something that when you were 11, you started out with music and you're sitting here now and you're still doing music and that's what you love and like you said earlier you know that you're um that's where your heart is and i i just wanted to say that with your music um they, they all had the emotional feeling they're well balanced they're um you know things things the timing is perfect the lyrics the lyrics are amazing they what a fantastic job you're doing and i i have yet to see them live and i'm going to soon when is your next event within, within two weeks you know saturday august 1st at uh, the cargo at the whitney peak hotel it's our first time playing at that venue you know very excited it's a fantastic venue and um and then after that, you know, we'll probably do a little bit of touring in California, you know, to close out the summer, you know, and then back, uh, back to the laboratory, you know, to create some more songs. Most excellent. Well, I wish you the best, and I know that you're going to go really far, as you have been, and you're going to continue that motion because you're pragmatic and <laughs> you're just great at what you do, and you can see it in your eyes, it's in your heart, and it's what you really want to do, and I just... Uh, I feel very honored that we got to talk and that you opened up with me and talked about some music and I had a good time. Yeah, thank you very much. I had a very good time too. It was a pleasure meeting you. Thank you. It was a pleasure meeting you. Absolutely. And again, we are at our bar in downtown Reno. Thanks for watching. This is Cover It Magazine again with Jen Finley.